we have all been shown a diagram like this or a similar one to this when we were, when we were at school. They claim this is the, uh, the water cycle of the earth. This is fine when you are a child and you are just beginning to uh, experience the world or are about to learn about the world outside. But once you grow up and become an adult and start to think for yourself, certain things just do not make any sense. They explained that water evaporates over the ocean and form into clouds, which then are transported over the land, and moisture contained within it condenses into rainfall and falls down as rain. The rain gains momentum and form into rivers, which are in turn returned to the oceans, and the whole cycle starts again. But there is one problem with this explanation, and that is there isn't enough rainfall to sustain all the oceans of the world. The worldwide rainfall for a calendar year is so tiny compared to the required amount or, uh, to sustain the oceans. This would in fact dry out the oceans of the world. You must agree that water is always moving. This ocean current chart shows the direction of the flow of ocean currents. Even in lakes such as the Great Lakes of the North America or the lakes of Middle Asia, water is always moving, caused by wind or other means. Science also tells us that our Earth is composed of 70% water and 30% land. So in that respect, our world is a water world. Even if you are in the middle of a desert and you need water, if you dig deep enough, you will finally hit water. There is a pressurized water system underground and that is also moving. The geysers are proof of this pressurized water system. This pressure system is also responsible for plate tectonics movement. When they build up pressure together with the crude oil, they have to release its energy and this is done across the world where there are fault lines. This pressure system also pumps water uphill. This is the reason why you find pools of water, sometimes over a large area, inside caverns. Water is always moving. This underground pressure system is also responsible for the large amounts of water that come down over the great rivers. Contrary to what they say, it is not rainwater nor melted ice cap water that forms into rivers. When they are drilling for crude oil, the first layer they hit is the, the water layer. This water is then pumped out and siphoned up separate, uh, separately to the crude oil. Crude oil is the lubricant of the continental plates. It shifts now and then, and when there is a great build-up of pressure, this is released by earthquakes when the plate tectonics move. 
this pressure buildup also gets to a breaking point where we experience earthquakes. For generations, human beings have pondered what the clouds are, its composition, etc. Clouds are not water, nor are they water, va uh, water vapor. They are completely different element. I have flown hundreds of times and I have flown through the clouds and it is such a beautiful experience. Up close and personal they look like shiny fluffy silky wool uh, and it's beautiful when the light, the sunlight hits it. Uh, when the sunlight is spread across the sky and for the first time in human history I will now explain what clouds are and how they are created. Clouds are a byproduct of the Aurora Borealis and the Aurora Australis. Clouds are created at the northern and southern edges of, uh, of, of the earth. These are results of electromagnetic radiation. Uh, these radiation bursts are sent out across the sky. And when these energy bursts reach far enough out of the energy zone, they form into clouds. They do not carry water nor water vapor. If you have ever observed clouds closely for a period of time, then you will have seen that parts of the clouds just disappear. They, they dissipate into the sky like magic. This is because they are losing the energy as they travel across the sky. Finally, I must explain how rain is formed. They are not formed by clouds. Rainfall is simply uh, when all the moisture in the air travels from high pressure into low pressure in the atmosphere. This causes the moisture to, to gain weight, to become water. Vapor becomes water and because it's heavy, water is heavier than, than the air surrounding it, it falls down as, uh, as rain. This is the simplest of, uh, of explanations. I will admit, however, that there is a high concentration of clouds when it rains. This is a result of the activities of the Aurora Borealis and Australis. These clouds act as a buffer above the rain. If you do the simplest of uh, investigations, then you will find out that the amount of rainfall in the world is not nearly enough to sustain the oceans of the world. The rainfall across the world is so tiny compared to the, the amount of water that's required to sustain the oceans. This again proves that there is an underground water system that is constantly moving. So we have to go back and redraw this diagram for our children. Teach them the truth, the real world we live in. Our world is a beautiful created realm, created just for us. Everything in it works like clockwork. This is the handiwork of our Creator.